Thank you, Parikshit. And uh, I am going to talk on vilagliptin. As my previous speaker also spoke on tenagliptin, but it was actually the talk was not on tenagliptin. It was talk on a combination of insulin sensitizer with a DPP for inhibitor and its better effect on a diabetic patient. And before that, there was a talk on alpha glucosidase inhibitor. So we are talking in a diabetic conference beyond SGLT2, and that is the best part of this symposia. Because I don't see a single diabetic person who will survive only on SGLT2 inhibitor for next 20 years. So we need all agents including sulfonylurea and we need good gliptin therapy to initiate when there is beta cell deficiency and where this villagliptin is there. So this is my table of content. I will start with the journey of villagliptin to uh, how the PKPD studies and how it is different than other gliptin and looking beyond glycemic control. These are the data, I think for this August audience sitting in this diacon, I need not to explain that we are also going to become diabetic capital and number of population is exceeding China in next few years. So maybe diabetic population is also exceeding China. So we are going to be number one. But the main problem is we are getting diabetes at younger age we have lower body weight and there was one uh, very good uh, presentation by Dr. Pro Professor Yajnik that the young diabetes population of India is not insulin resistant patient, they have beta cell deficiency. So we need therapy which address that beta cell part and that is where we need multiple agents. That is what I was talking about. Patient needs multiple therapy and so far in this 100 years of insulin invention to this 2022 we have 89 total molecules by various 36 entities and total 23 unique drug combinations are in practice as far as incretin is concerned it's a very old concept like insulin because it was first this coined the term incretin in 1930 then Enteroinsular axis was the term coined in around uh, late 60s and in 1980 afterwards we start working on proper GLP-1 receptor and its action as well as DP4 inhibitor to enhance that GLP-1 part and where Novartis was pioneer in around late 90s where they discovered the first prototype molecule of DPP-4 inhibitor. So this is 1996 to 2007 where the first marketing approval received by Novartis to present this molecule to the world in form of villagliptin. And these are the molecular structures. You can see villagliptin. This is the exact villagliptin what we are using. This is the proto villagliptin which was changed later on. This is the molecule saxagliptin, linagliptin and cetagliptin. Now cetagliptin and linagliptin both are competitive inhibitor. Saxagliptin and villagliptin are substrate enzyme blocker. So they are strong inhibitor, non-competitive inhibitor and at the same time you can see the star that dose adjustment required for renal impairment is much much more with cetagliptin but it is also true with saxa and villa. Only with lina there is no dose adjustment is required and saxa is also assigned to have few drug drug interaction because of this CYP3A4 and A5 inhibitor accent, I mean co-actions. Villagliptin term coined from this Vilhor that is Vil, DAP that is dipeptidyl aminopeptidase. Glee is the term coined by WHO for anti-diabetic medicine which is helping to secrete insulin and TIN in IN is for inhibitor. So Villagliptin the term was coined in 1998. As far as biochemistry is concerned, I already told you that we have different either non-competitive or competitive blocker. These are cetagliptin, allogliptin and linagliptin are non-peptidomimetic while saxa and villa are peptide-like and the excretion is exclusively renal for ceta, 
almost exclusively for villa as well as elo and that's why they also need some adjustment not full adjustment like citagliptin but they need and linagliptin is having more biliary biliary excretion and that's why you, it requires no change and metabolization is concerned citagliptin not metabolized lina not metabolized while villa metabolized to hepat uh, hepatically metabolized to an active inactive metabolized and saxagliptin metabolized to active metabolized this is the difference but what is the clinical importance of this difference the clinical important difference is citagliptin 100 mg qd dose will have t half life compound t half life of 8 to 24 hours so it's a once weekly that once daily molecule which blocks dpp4 inhibitor uh, uh, dpp4 enzymes by more than 80% at the end of 24 hours and similarly if you want to use villagliptin though there are now companies even novartis people has come up with the sustained release form after patent is over but for years together we are using villagliptin 50 mg bid one of the strongest dpp4 inhibitor with a short half life that's why we are using twice but more than 94% of maximum action more than 80% of dpp inhibition at 12 over 12 hour post to send that's why it has to be used bt and if you see linagliptin saxagliptin they are good agent but the dpp4 inhibition is around 70% at the end of 24 hours so they are they are working for 24 hours but dpp4 inhibition the optimum dpp4 inhibition is more than 80% which is maximally covered by elo villa or uh, villa and citagliptin 2 as far as action is concerned we are also much concerned regarding what hba1c level reduction we are getting by any gliptin and we don't have typical head to head study but we have data to compare them and where we have few data uh, that hba1c reduction was highest found with villagliptin you can see the proportion of the patient targeting hba1c less than 6.5 36% with villa and 25 and 32% with cita and saxa respectively and patient who achieved less than 7 were 65% they are quite nearby so you cannot say one is very strong and second is very poor they are quite nearby but if you compare villagliptin twice daily 50 mg always stands out and the action on fasting blood glucose is significant because it is used bd because it is having stronger action inhibition of dpp4 you are getting highest result in fpg reduction with villagliptin and so as mej mean amplitude of glycemic excursion is also reduced significantly in comparison to citagliptin alone and um, that is once daily use and villagliptin 50 mg bd and that's why I'm, why i'm putting more emphasis because even there are hundred of company who is making now villagliptin od i am still believer of using villagliptin bd because that is one of the best dpp4 inhibitor strongest dpp4 inhibitor and it should be used like that only and see the level of uh, glucagon and level of intact glp1 even in comparison to citagliptin we have upper hand with villagliptin as far as the plasma level of glucagon reduction is concerned and intact glp1 level is concerned and if you go through the meta analysis network for comparing villagliptin to other gliptin even villagliptin 50 mg bid has showed highest probability in reduction of hba1c even villagliptin 100 mg qid has shown highest probability of reducing weight but frankly speaking dp4 inhibitor are more of a weight neutral drug so don't expect any weight loss even though what you are using villagliptin 100 mg od the most important part when you are comparing this gliptin to other gliptin the lowest incidence of hypoglycemia is found with villagliptin and actually novartis people are having data that it is having alpha cell sensing activity that when sugar level falls down it sends alpha cell also and that's why the chances of hypoglycemia is least and they have data even in patient who are on insulin after adding villagliptin there were fewer incidence of hypoglycemia was found when they add villagliptin to insulin therapy patient and because i was talking about sgld2 sgld2 which is going on in uh, 
each and every conference so we have to look beyond glycemic control also so what glycemic control i mean beyond glycemic control you would like to see as far as dpp4 is concerned it is having gi effect it reduces gastric emptying so like acarbos the dr parak has already told that acarbos is a drug though it is acting and uh, not uh, allowing sugar to get digest early but at the same time these are the agent which improves glp1 and they are reducing postprandial emptying similarly even metformin delayed release formula and so as dp4 inhibit they delayed gastric emptying but not as strong as glp1 analog beta cell actions we all know it uh, acts on beta cell but they have somewhat beta cell preservatory action we don't have in vivo study with that but we have in vitro study with villa we have in vitro study with even linagliptin that if you put beta cell in the medium of dpp4 inhibitor they survive more under oxidative stress and apoptosis was less so definitely this has something to do with beta cell preservation as far as cardiovascular effect is concerned it is postulated that it is having cardiovascular benefit but still we have few concerns that i will speak uh, in later part of my slide with uh, saxagliptin and cns effect is neurotropic and neuroprotective so definitely we need not to worry what about villagliptin and heart failure we have data with villagliptin during its phase 3 study only that it is not changing any parameter which increases left ventricular failure and in comparison to saxagliptin it is 0.74 which was found in during the phase 3 study so it is safe even in comparison to ceta which is having teco study which is having uh, i mean neutrality for heart failure it is having better result than saxagliptin people and the kaplan meier uh, cow suggests that adjudicated composite end point of mass is are less with villagliptin 50 mg once daily or twice daily in comparison to comparator and there is no significant increase in any heart parameter especially heart failure and these are the real world conditions even in real world condition we have number of studies where it has shown there is no extra alarming features which suggest that it increases heart failure rate or anything as far as severe renal impairment is concerned how this drug is effective one important thing you should use 50 mg od in severe renal impairment you cannot use bd because it is having renal excretion but the inactive metabolite but if you compare with a similar dose that is 25 mg of sitagliptin comparing to 50 mg villagliptin it has shown better fasting blood glucose reduction as far as tolerability is concerned both are well tolerated and i will say not only severe renal this is one of the best tolerated anti diabetic medicine very very less side effect only few patient will not tolerate gliptin and that's why it is one of the safe and it was found to be safe even in renal impairment patient so gliptin has revolutionized the concept of diabetes management because they were not talking about only beta cells they were not talking about glycemic control but they are also having action on alpha cell later on it was again fortified by scl2 later on but they provide an effective and well tolerated alternative to management of diabetes i am talking about sulfonylurea we need sulfonylurea also but when patient is having hypoglycemia when patient is young diabetic these are the better agent to start with and maybe you can add sulfonylurea whenever it is needed so we have a better alternative guidelines has acknowledged them as a well tolerated adverse effect profile as well as urge uh, and the urge healthcare professional to use gliptin should they be struggling with regards weight or hypoglycemia so whenever you want a safer drug this is the first drug to use and no gliptins are similar they have bit differences hb1c reduction almost same hypoglycemia rate least with villagliptin and villagliptin has shown the benefit across with efficacy and safety and even 
beyond glycemic control. Actually, one slide was missing in that. Even with filagliptin, there is improvement in retinal blood flow and reduction in retinal uh, retinopathy was also a small study. So, it is not only the drug which acts on beta cell, it is also having beyond glycemic control action also. Thank you.